First Sergeant Kemp here with Company D, Sick United States Sharpshooters, and today we'll be showing you how to make this style a flat based live round for the 54 caliber 1859 Sharps rifle. Now, before we get any further, I want to be super clear this is not a reloading video. I'm not going to be talking about powders or powder substitutes, bullets, bullet weights, ballistics, any of that stuff. Um, this is at its very heart how to make a paper tube with a tissue paper base and how to glue it to a bullet. Um, what you put inside it and how you use it is up to your research, your experience, uh, your personal shooting preferences, and of course reading, following, and understanding your specific rifle manufacturer's uh, safety guidelines. Um, the other thing I want to point out is that this is a historically inspired round, but it is not a historical reproduction. Uh, this just happens to be a round that me and others in our company enjoy shooting, and it's uh, reliable and easy to load. So I wanted to kind of uh, take this time to go over how we make this, and to also sort of consolidate some of the massive amount of information that's spread all over the internet in different forums. So this, if anything, could be a starting point for your research into uh, live firing your 1859 Sharps. And to kind of give you uh, some insight into some of the other um, styles and thoughts as far as making live rounds for this rifle. Now, if you are interested in making historical reproduction rounds, there are a few people out there, and there are some pretty um, good pictures out there on the internet to kind of inspire your creation. Um, if you're looking for a primary source that's inexpensive, I recommend picking up the 1859 Sharps Manual. And I've gotten a couple of these off of eBay for like five or six dollars. And uh, this one just happens to be made by Cornell Publications. And in it, you'll find some pretty useful information and some pretty entertaining uh, testimonials by uh, what would later become rather famous Civil War officers. Um, in it, it gives you a template to work from for making sort of the historical style of paper tube. And you can cut them out yourself and then roll and glue them up and then cut them to length to your desired length for your chamber. Um, but in it, it has some pretty interesting information on loading the 1859 Sharps. So the Sharps Rifle Manufacturing Company says the proper charge for army rifles and carbines is 55 to 60 grains of powder of 300 yards of prove it range. So they're saying for about 300 yards accuracy, uh, 60 grain powder charge, 55 to 60 grain, uh, will probably get you there. And that's what I load. Uh, my rounds to is 60 grains. Um, and cartridges are used for convenience and celerity in firing. In using loose ammunition, the barrel must be held vertically with the muzzle down, the ball is inserted and forced to its seat with a short rod, and the powder charge is poured upon it, and the slide closed. In all firings without patches, the balls must be coated with tallow to prevent the bore from leading. Cartridges made of the exact length of the chamber, having their ends closed with thin muslin or gauze, are preferred by some. Such cartridges are not cut off, the fire of the primes penetrating the cartridge through its rear end. Two short paragraphs, but let's get to unpacking some of this and kind of add more to our sort of Sharps history and nomenclature. So, if you're new to the 1859 Sharps, um, not many people know that you can just load loose ammunition um, into it. Uh, and that's what they talked about first. So you would hold your rifle vertically and then you would drop your uh, bullet down into the chamber and seating it firmly. And then you would uh, put in your powder charge behind it, whatever you feel like shooting that day, and then close the block and then you can prime and shoot. Uh, I actually, like to do that because um, sometimes I just want to be lazy and go have fun on the range. So uh, what I'll usually do is I'll just take a flask and a powder measure with my powder um, and say like a box of these uh, Hornady Great Plains and I'll just have a good hour at the range and you know these are only a few dollars. Uh, that is an option for you and so you don't actually have to make the paper cartridges. The other thing they're talking about um, is in all firings without patches, the balls must be coated with tallow to prevent the bore from leading. 
Um, so one of the other things I'm not going, going to get into is how to lube your bullet, except that I will tell you, you must lube your bullet. Um, and the reason why I'm not going to go into depth on bullet lubes is because there seems to be as many recipes for bullet lubricants as there are black powder shooters. Um, so if you have a tried and true bullet lube for cast bullets that you already have, by all means stick with it. Um, I use uh, SPG, but use whatever you want. Um, and if you don't know, there's great information on forums. You can also reach out to uh, black powder uh, shooting organizations that are probably in your area. Um, and our good friends over at the First Minnesota Sharpshooters have done a couple uh, really good episodes on making lube and lubing bullets. So I'll have a link to their channel down in our description, uh, but they also always comment on our videos. So you can also check the comment section too. Um, but here they're expressing the need to lube, um, but also that they're lubricating with tallow. And tallow is essentially just a, a rendered animal fat, and it's super handy. I keep a tin of it in my knapsack when I reenact because you can use it from, you know, you know, lubing bullets if you were an actual actual soldier, um, uh, preventing rust on tools and knives. Uh, you can, it, it makes a pretty good lip balm. Um, if they're getting chapped when you're reenacting, there's a lot of good uses and it's not hard to get. You can find um, tallow on uh, Amazon, for example. So it is kind of handy to have and that could, be, if you're interested in a historical round, that could be something to look into. Um, cartridges made of the exact length of the chamber, having their ends closed, uh, blah, 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 are not cut off. So there's a lot going on with that statement. So if you're new to this, um, there's, there was some evolution in the making of the Sharps cartridge round. Um, early rounds had, were like these rat tail rounds that we use for reenacting. And these are our other uh, blanks. And we have videos, some of our, our earliest videos were how to make these. So essentially like the earliest Sharps rounds would have looked um, essentially something very similar to this. And I've made rounds like this and I know a lot of other sharpshooters um, still do. Uh, they work. They're just, they're a little too tedious and finicky for me. And I don't think they're very, they're a little too fragile for me to feel comfortable digging around in my cartridge box or taking to the range, but I have used them. Um, but the reason why this style of round wasn't very popular and was rather short lived was in order for these rounds to work, you would have to um, of course, load your uh, round into the rifle, and then as you raise the block, the block will cut off the back of the round, exposing powder to the flash hole. Um, the problem with that is if you're trying to maintain um, consistency and accuracy in long range shooting, Every time you chop a round off, you're chopping off a different amount of powder. Anyone who knows, you know, about accurate shooting knows that having a consistent powder charge every single time is what you need. So as far as just putting a bullet down range, these work just fine. But if you're looking for consistent, accurate results, you're going to need a fully enclosed, consistent powder charge in something like a flat-based round, for example. So that's what they're referring to um, in that paragraph. So, like I said, check this out if you want some more information on the historical side of the 1859 Sharps. So, let's go ahead and kind of get started into some of the things you're going to need to make this style of paper tube. Um, like I like I want to be clear again, like this is, I'll be talking about how I make this one, but it is just for demonstration. It is not a prescription. So, of course, do your research and adapt the, the techniques to fit whatever you're looking for. Um, you'll need some paper. For this, just like our blank rounds, we use uh, receipt paper that you can get at any office supply store. Um, I do want to point out that there is quite a bit of discussion and conversation about what type of paper to use for sharps rounds. Um, some people, like us, we use receipt paper and we're plenty happy and satisfied with it. Uh, some people use hair curling paper that you can buy uh, inexpensively at beauty supply stores. Um, some people use cigarette papers or uh, other sort of tissue papers for their rounds. And there are even quite a number of backyard scientists who uh, make their own uh, nitrate formula and they make their own nitrate papers. And it's like, well, what's nitrate paper and why would someone go through all that hassle of making it? Well, 
that, that comes down to combustion. Some people really want like 100% cartridge combustion and nitrate paper by being intensely more flammable than just plain paper uh, can help you reach that 100% combustion mark. Um, and so just sort of as a personal note from our company, it's like, yeah, I mean, even reenacting sometimes uh, we'll have uh, 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 wrapper paper still in our chamber after we fired our blank. Um, and every once in a while, you'll have some paper um, kind of poof out of the, the muzzle. Um, yeah, paper doesn't always burn, but it hasn't been that big of a deal. And it's certainly not en enough of an inconvenience for us to start making all the formulas and, you know, mixing the chemicals, soaking the paper, drying the paper, and then trying to make those rounds. Um, usually, if, if it's stuck in the, the chamber, I'll just pick it out with my finger. Um, or sometimes I'll just, you know, blow it out the muzzle. Um, just, or you can use like a cleaning rod or something like that to, to clear it. It's not that big of a hassle. I imagine maybe if the soldiers were in combat during the Civil War with it, it might have been a bigger deal. Um, but if you're just kind of plinking around on the old shooting range, it's not, it's, in our opinion, it's not that big of an issue. Uh, but there are people out there that um, are interested and they talk about uh, what papers to use and why to use them and is it a big deal. Um, our personal opinion, it's not a big deal. Then you'll need some uh, glues. You'll need a glue stick of your choice for uh, gluing the tube together. And then uh, I recommend some cyanoacrylate glue uh, to glue in the tissue paper base as well as adhering the bullet to the cartridge. Um, I highly recommend, sort of my top tip, is to get the glue that has a brush. Uh, it's gonna allow you to be a lot more precise and repeatable and make your reloading experience uh, a lot more comfortable and pleasant in the long run. Um, I got this for like six bucks, seven bucks on Amazon. A lot of hardware stores sell it. Um, a quick note though, some people like to, I guess they claim they save a little bit of money by using like nail polish uh, as an adhesive. I've experimented with it. It seems to glue paper to paper just fine. Um, but I just feel like it, it takes a lot longer to dry gluing the paper uh, to the bullet. So, um, and in the long run, I've made dozens of rounds and I'm not even halfway done with this bottle. So I don't think the cost savings is there, but some people use it. So I just wanted to share that with you. Um, then you're going to need um, uh, some powder, like a powder flask maybe, and a powder measure. Um, Measure your powder how you want. If you're like a serious reloader, by all means, use your fancy digital setups. But um, we're not competition shooting, so these things provide us plenty enough accuracy and repeatability at the range. And um, a powder of your choice. And uh, of course, you're going to need some bullets. Uh, I've used you know these for years; they work fine. But I've really started to enjoy these 54 sharps rounds that I get from Track of the Wolf. And they're uh, really affordable and they look much more like the originals than the Hornady ones do. The other thing I like about the Track of the Wolf ones is they come unlubricated. So that means I don't have to remove any lubricant uh, in order for my uh, bullets to adhere uh, to the paper cartridge. So it kind of saves me a step in the process and speeds it up a little bit. Um, the other thing I want to say uh, with powder is you may need a filler material. Um, so, in, as in the manual and in from my personal experience, um, you, you need to make sure that your cartridge is long, is, is close enough to the uh, flash hole on the block to combust reliably. And that does kind of take a little bit of um, experimentation and, and figuring on your own. Um, this round uh, fired 100% of the time the other day when we were at the range, but say, um, say you're using like a, a different type of powder or a powder substitute and you're um, running a, a light load, say 30 or 35 grains. Well, in that case, your, your cartridge might be uh, too short and too far away from the flash hole to combust consistently. Um, and you can do what uh, I see Cap and Ball do a lot over on their channel. I think they use uh, cornmeal. Um, we use uh, cream of wheat. But the idea is the same. So if, if you need a certain length, but you have not enough powder, you put your powder charge in by the combustion side, and then you would add whatever charge of filler, say cream of wheat, to get you that length, and then you can seat your bullet. And that way you have 
um, a normal sized bullet with a lighter charge. Uh, so that's something you may need to look into as well. And of course, I would probably say you uh, need to have some tissue paper for your flat base rounds. Uh, you can buy this at craft stores and it's easily cut into one inch squares at home. Um, you can also buy uh, pre-cut craft squares in tissue paper off of Amazon for like only like five or six dollars. So if um, you plan on making a lot or you don't like the tedium of cutting them all out, you can uh, buy them online and they come in all different colors. So you'll have a very festive looking cartridge box. Now the, uh, probably the most important part of this entire process is this guy right here. Um, the wooden dowel that you use to form your tube. This is where you need to spend all your time and all your energy to get this right because this is going to make or break how much you enjoy this process. But if you think about it in the long run, fine tuning your dowel is really no different than tuning up your uh, reloading dies for your brass cartridges. So what I do here is I, I take a three quarter inch oak dowel, wood species doesn't really matter, um, and then I turn it down on my lathe. and once I get close to the diameter that I'm looking for, I'll just start taking it off the lathe and I'll make a test tube. And then I'll check the fit of that tube on my bullet. And if it's too loose, if the cartridge is too loose, it goes back on the lathe and I put sandpaper to it. And I start dialing it in a few thousands of an inch at a time until I get a nice friction fit um, on my bullet with my paper tube. So make sure you know you have plenty of um, extra tubes ready to go, uh, papers to go, so you can fine tune and dial it in. But that's this this dowel is the key to it all. Um, now, if you don't have the ability to make a big piece of wood into a smaller piece of wood, then I know some people who work backwards. So they'll start with say a uh, half inch dowel, and then they'll use something like packing tape, and they'll slowly build up that dowel until they get the fit that they want from their paper tube. But this is the key to the whole thing, is just making this little piece of wood the right size to give you the fit that you're looking for. One other thing that I, I kind of came up with, um, it's not necessary, but I wanted to share it with you, is I have a base former. And what this fancy high-tech piece of equipment is, it's a 9 16 hole drilled into a block of scrap wood. And what this does is it pre-folds my flat bases for easier installation into my cartridge. So I'll just take my tissue paper and I'll center it over the hole and I'll use my dowel and then I'll push it through. And then I have a base ready to be installed into the cartridge. I pull back and it's all ready to go. Not necessary, but I've really enjoyed using that. So um, with that, let's go ahead and get started and we'll get you in a little bit closer and see how we make these paper tubes. Now we have everything assembled to start making our cartridges. Now for this particular round that we use, um, I use 60 grains of 2F Go-X. Um, and to have a cartridge this size, it's two inches wide and an inch and an eighth tall. But if you need to change this, which you should kind of test in your rifle a little bit to see what's gonna work best for you, whether it's the difference in bullet or powder charge um, or differences in your chamber and your block, uh, what I would recommend doing uh, for your first couple of rounds is to make some test tubes. So uh, if you're using the receipt paper, you can go ahead and cut them to um, two inches wide but don't trim them down to size. And so you, you make yourself a long tube and go ahead and install the flat base in it. And what you can do is uh, you could fill it with the black powder charge that you're planning on using or to save powder or prevent spilling it, you can go ahead and use a filler like cream of wheat um, in the same grain number and that should get you pretty close. Uh, and then so you'd go ahead and put your charge in here that you're looking for and you take your bullet and you would slide it down into the tube to where it, it hits your charge. And then you would take a pencil and mark on your bullet where you want to uh, cut your cartridge. So you also have to figure out where you would want to adhere to on your bullet. 
And this may vary quite a bit depending on your bullet choices. For these ones that I get from Track of the Wolf, I like to glue to this base ring right here. Now some people will glue and um, uh, will glue to here. Uh, I've seen people glue rounds to the base of the cartridge and some of the originals would actually be tied to this ring tail right here. So do your research and figure out where you want to adhere to. But for these rounds that we use, I just glue to, to this third ring. And I like that because that still gives me two rings to fill with lubricant when I'm done assembling. So once you have your uh, length figured out, go ahead and cut a bunch of blanks and be sure to always cut extra. Um, every once in a while, one's gonna tear or not come out right. So um, save yourself some, some hassle and cut extras just in case. And so you take your blank and your dowel that you took a lot of time to prepare. And then you roll it on and you take your glue stick. And you don't need a whole bunch, but just make sure you really get those edges. And then you roll your cartridge nice and tight. Smooth that seam down. Now, if you're doing a bunch of these, I just do this in steps. So I'd go and roll all the tubes and I'd go back and I'd put in all the bases and I'd go back and charge all of them and I'd go and glue the bullets in. But for demonstration, I'm just gonna do one in one go. So we have that glued together. Now I'm going to use my handy dandy former for my flat base. I have my one inch tissue paper and I'm going to push that through and that is ready to go. So I take that off, stick it on the end of my dowel. And then I insert that into my cartridge, stopping, oh, about an eighth of the way from the end of the cartridge. And using my CA glue with the brush, I'm going to try and remove as much of the glue off the brush as possible because you just need a nice, even, thin coat of glue on the edge of this round and this will take a little bit of practice to get right but what happens if you put too much glue on here is that it's going to absorb into the tissue paper and adhere itself to the dowel it's not the end of the world but it is the end of that round so i like to give it a little bit of a twist as i come to the end give it a little push and I'll remove my dowel. And then normally I'd set this aside to let dry. Now it's time for some powder. So powder of your choice, charge of your choosing. And I don't stress these loads too much since we're not competition shooting. And I'll go ahead and charge the cartridge. Make sure I get all my powder out of my measure. And then I'll set this down and I'll tamp it and try to settle that powder. And now it's time to glue in a bullet. So I don't worry too much about how much glue I put on the bullet. You don't have to be as gentle as you do on the cartridge itself, but you definitely don't want to put too much on. You don't, don't want to waste it. The other thing I like about using CA glue for this project instead of white glue that a lot of people do is the CA glue will provide a little more structural integrity and rigidity when the round is complete. So you just um, put the glue on the bullet, insert it into the cartridge, push down firmly, and just take a minute to make sure everything's nice and centered and looks even. So then I would normally set this aside and let dry further. But now you need to lube. Uh, for this, I, when I'm doing small batches, I'll just take my stick of SPG and I'll rub it into the grooves like a crayon until I have the level of lubricant that I desire. Now if I'm doing a bigger batch, which I actually do have to do, I got about 60 rounds I have to make, um, then I'll go ahead and set up the double boiler. I have a big brick of SPG and I'll melt down the 
uh, brick, and then I'll just dunk the, the bullets into the lubricant and set them aside to dry. And just like that, you have your 54 caliber paper cartridge flat based round for your reproduction 1859 sharps. I only have about 59 more of these to make before our upcoming bivouac. We hope this video has been uh, helpful for you and maybe you've learned a tip or two along the way. It wasn't designed to be a definitive guide to sharps cartridges um, and it certainly wasn't designed to be a reloading video. We're leaving a lot of that up to you and your personal expertise and experience and shooting preferences and your own individual research as to um, how to make this style of round work for you. Um, if you want to see these particular rounds put to the test and how they fit in our chamber, uh, you can check out our company Facebook page. We'll have a link down in the description. Um, if you want to see uh, more people shooting uh, Civil War firearms and maybe learn a li little bit more about lubing cast bullets, be sure to check out our good friends over at the First Minnesota Sharpshooters. And um, as always, thanks for your great questions and positive comments. Thanks for liking, sharing, and subscribing. And before you go, be sure to hit that notification bell to stay updated on all of our upcoming videos. And we'll see you next time.